Hello, and happy Saturday, friends. Cyber here with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use Guide. Uh, before I get started today, thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this guide with a friend. Uh, we're currently in the middle of a push to get to a thousand subscribers, uh, and you can help out by just clicking the little subscribe button. Um, I very much appreciate it if you do. All right, let's get down to business. Today, we're going to take a deep dive into a very personal class of mine, the Magus. Uh, the Magus is, is my baby, my second class I'm releasing, and it just came out uh, less than 48 hours ago. Uh, the canon name for the Magus is Maya. Uh, let's just waste no time on the credits. Uh, it's, not, it's not that special. Uh, I did the concept, design, code, writing, gameplay and editing and compiling sprites to create her image. Now the sprite art credits for all but the Aerith skin itself are, are mainly recycled skins from other creators, um, and I've linked to those on the Steam Workshop page uh, just for reference, uh, so I'm not taking any credit for the art in that case. I've just kind of compiled it to make her look the way she does. Uh, so let's jump into her base stats the first base stat is going to start at a 21 at first resolve and move to a 37 at max resolve. Um, it's going to grow by 4 HP at each resolve level. This is a below average stat, um, and it, it's very similar to a Grave Robber or a Jester. It's a little higher than the Jester and the Grave Robber, but not by much. Uh, so it still classifies as below average in my book. The dodge here is going to start at a 5 at resolve 1 and progress all the way to a 25 at max resolve. Uh, this is what I consider an average dodge. Um, it's the same growth that a man-at-arms has, and that just seems uh, to be the balancing point. Uh, Prot is a 0, nothing to see here. Uh, the speed starts at a 7 at first resolve and it progresses to an 8 at third resolve and to a 9 at max resolve. Uh, this is uh, high speed. This is the Jester kind of Plague Doctor kind of speed uh, that you really need in a support class or somebody you want to go first. Uh, so she's going to benefit from that a ton. The accuracy mod is zero, as you would expect from most classes. This is what you see. Uh, the crit is going to start at 2%, and it's going to progress all the way to a 6% at max resolve. This is slightly below average on the crit front as well. Uh, this is the same crit progression as a man-at-arms has, or a leper, I think, has the same crit progression. Uh, the damage is uh, its a little bit customized. It's, it's backline damage, but a little bit lower at many of these different stages. Like, the max damage won't hit as high um, as, you know, normal backline damagers do, like an Arbalist, for example. Uh, but this is very com comparable to, I'd say, a Jester or a Plague Doctor as far as uh, the damage mod is concerned. It's going to start at a 4 to 7, and at max resolve it'll be a 6 to a 13. Uh, most backliners, you'll see, will have like a 7 to a 14 at that end level. Um, but the Magus just doesn't exist to put that much damage out, so I curbed down the maximum ever more slightly. So you'll notice when we look through these stats that most of them were either average or below average, the only exception being that speed. Um, so you're going to see she's going to depend a lot upon her turn count coming up with a decent uh, priority and depend a lot upon her team. And that's just without even looking at her combat skills, which we're going to get into now. Our first combat skill is Seal Evil. It is usable from rank 2, 3, or 4, and you can target rank 1, 2, or 3 opponents with this move. It's a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 105, a damage modifier of negative 60%, and a crit mod at this level of a whopping 11%. I believe that starts somewhere around like a 6%, something like that. Um, but this is a st stereotypical stun move, doing about uh, less than half damage. And uh, it's, it has the normal progression at this level, that's 130% base. And you're going to notice this little part at the end here on most of her skills. This is going to buff Magna Vis, which is another skill of hers, by 10% damage. So most of her moves here are going to actually have 
that tag on the bottom. It's going to boost the crit or damage of Magna Vis, which is her final skill. The second skill here is Transfix. This is usable from rank 2, 3, or 4, and can target rank 2, 3, or 4 opponents on the other side. It's a ranged attack that will move her forward one space. Has an accuracy base of 110, a damage modifier of negative 50%, and a crit modifier of plus 8%. This is another one of those buffing crit attack moves, which she has a few of. Um, what else will it do? It's going to pull the enemy with a standard pull base, 130% at this level, 100% at base level. It's going to clear enemy corpses, and it will debuff the target with a standard debuff base for negative 13 dodge. I believe at um, opening resolve it's a 10 dodge, and I think it maxes out at a 14, something like that. 16. So it might start a little lower than a 10. It might be an 8 or a 9. I don't recall currently, and I don't have a level 0 on hand. But this will buff Magnavis by 20% damage. So you'll already see if you if you use a lot of transfix in your combat rather than seal evil, you're going to gain twice as much toward Magnavis as far as buffing that for the end of the dungeon. Because that buff will last until you camp. So if you're going to take this party out, you either want to camp really, really, really late, like at the end of the dungeon, or you want to camp early and then try and snowball your buff from there. The third ability here is Healing Wind. It is usable from rank 2, 3, or 4 as well. And it heals the party for 1 to 2 damage. At max level, I believe this just heals a standard 2 damage on all heroes, and it will also heal them two points around for two rounds. Uh, at opening levels, we're talking about one HP healed and a regen of one for two rounds. Uh, this is not a very high amount of actual healing. The output here is not high. However, the fact that it is a regen that lasts multiple turns means it's going to keep you from death store at very key points. You're not going to see somebody who has this regen going die from a bleed when their turn starts, for example. Um, so this is just a good way to combat status ailments, ruining your day in that kind of situation. Also, if you don't need a heal, if you've only got a few guys that are a little bit hurt, this will, over time, keep everyone at max HP as long as you keep that regen heal up. I don't have a lot of problems um, running her as my primary healer and only having one in case like a dire situation comes, one guy gets down to death's door or close to it and I need massive healing output on one target. That's what I'll bring a backup for. Um, and this skill actually will buff Magnavis's crit by 5%. So you can already see if you use this a lot, you could get the Magnavis ability to have a plus 30 or even a plus 50 or 60 percent crit by the end of a longer dungeon and that could be really effective her fourth ability here is haste it is usable from any rank and you target an ally she cannot target herself with this uh, she is going to deal stress damage to that ally about 10 at this level and she's going to deal stress to herself for six at this level it's going to debuff that target, minus 40% damage, but allow them an extra turn. And this will have a one turn cooldown where you will not be able to select it again. So um, you can select this, it's going to give them a second turn. It's not going to get rid of their potency unless damage is the sole consideration of that potency. And that debuff is only for the next turn that person takes. So if you give them two turns, give them a second turn before their first turn comes up, the first turn will be slightly damaged, nerfed, and then the second turn will be holistically normal. So this can be a big boon if you have a DPS class that just needs to carve through some enemy lines, or if you have that off healer that needs to put in some work this turn, or if you have a stress healer, for instance, that needs to get a lot of stress healing done in one turn. Her fifth ability is Hymn of the Ancients. This is a limited use ability that is only ever usable once per battle. It's usable from rank 1, 2, or 3. 
And this does a couple of things. This is a good setup move. Uh, it's going to set up your regen. It's going to have the party heal for two points a round for three rounds. Uh, at opening resolve, it's only going to be uh, one point a round for those three rounds. It's going to buff your party, and it's going to be, at this level, plus 10 dodge and minus 15% stress damage for everybody for the duration of that battle. Um, and it will activate Riposte on herself for three rounds. It will move her back to two ranks into the back ranks, and it will buff Magnavis for 10% damage. Um, there is seldom a dungeon run where I don't plan on using this on round one. Um, I love this as a buff move. It's very similar to the Man-at-Arms bolster, as far as it's going to give a dodge bonus and a negative to stress, but it's going to give her specific benefits as well, and it will set that regen on everybody so that you don't necessarily have to worry as much, um, at least in the early rounds, about healing. Her sixth ability here is Rune of Serenity. Rune of Serenity is usable from rank 1, 2, 3, or 4, and it's going to uh, heal the target for 6 stress and heal herself for 5 stress. Um, I believe at max level it's 7 and 6. Um, and at early levels, it's right around 5 stress healing on both targets. Uh, but I could be mistaken. So this is a good stress heal. Um, it's very comparable to the Jester in numeric value that it's healing, but it's two targets. So if you, do, if you only have one target that keeps getting stressed out, this is not the most efficient way to do that. But you can, with enough repetition of this, make up for those situations. Um, and this will also buff Magnavis for 20% damage. So you'll notice the most potent things to buff Magnavis are Transfix, Rune of Serenity, and if you're counting crit, Magnavis is buffed pretty considerably by Healing Wind as well. So if you're going out with the intention of just blasting people at the end of the dungeon run, this kind of moveset might be what you want. Uh, but let's go into that last skill real quick. Magnavis is usable from rank 2 or 4, and it targets rank 2, 3, and 4 opponents. It is a cleave attack. This is usable once per battle at opening resolve. I, somewhere around resolve level 3 or 4, this becomes usable a second time. Um, but it's a ranged attack. It has an accuracy base of 115, a damage modifier of negative 45%, this will grow as you level up. I believe the starting damage modifier is negative 50, and the ending negative modifier is negative 40% damage. And it will all do negative 1% crit. So you're not going to get as many crits on this, you're not going to get a bonus, but it will still crit a decent amount, especially if you're using Healing Wind. Um, this will stress herself out for 15 stress, and it will debuff itself this move, Magnavis, minus 50% damage for the rest of that combat. Um, so this is kind of a good one-turn uh, massive damage to the rank 2, 3, and 4 opponents. This is very good on round 1 in those late dungeon runs, um, and you'll find a lot of use for it there. I'll probably show it off when I go into the combat section later on. All right, as far as her camping skills go, um, she does not have the generic Encourage. It is replaced by her first unique skill, but she does have generic Wound Care and Pep Talk, as the normal class will. Uh, but her first custom camping skill is Prayer of the Cetra. It is a time cost 2 camping skill. You target a companion, and you will heal them 20 stress. This can be used twice per camp. Um, when you factor in that it's a little bit more potent than Encourage is, it's going to heal 20 stress instead of 15 for the same cost, and you can use it twice, this is a rather potent way to stress heal your party, but we haven't even gotten to the really potent part yet. The second camping skill here is the one we're talking about, Arcane Ward. It is a time cost 2 camping skill. She's going to target herself, She's going to give herself a plus 15% virtue chance for the remainder of that dungeon. Uh, and she's going to supercharge her camping skills, 
plus 50% stress relief skills while camping. Um, this three rounds is just the generic um, kind of buff timer, but basically just know that this camp she is going to have 50% more effective stress relief skills. That's going to turn Prayer of the Citra, assuming you don't have any trinkets that also boost her stress healing wholesale, um, it's going to turn this into a time cost to 30 stress heal to a single target. So you can use two points on this, use a total of four points on this, and heal between her allies 60 stress, assuming you don't have a trinket buffing her stress heal. Uh, so that can be really, really potent, and I highly recommend it if you have the time cost for it. She's very good at stress healing at the camp. Her third camping skill is Rune Seeker. This is a time cost 2 camping skill. Um, she is going to produce a random trinket with this, but very similar to the Antiquarian. Um, but she, this has a high chance of acquiring a Runestone trinket, which is a new tier and type of trinket available with the Megas' um, mod. So she's she has a high chance of finding her own kind of trinket here, and then she will, if not find those, find a different trinket entirely. Her fourth camping skill is Destiny's Weave. This is a time cost four camping skill. She's going to buff the party with this. Uh, for the next four battles, they're going to have plus seven accuracy, and they're going to take 7% less crits received. For those four battles. So this is just a good way to keep people alive, to ensure that um, they are hitting with maximum efficiency and avoiding uh, deadly blows that should have harmed them much more than they will when this is said and done. And our fifth custom camping skill is the Lifestream Flows. This is a time cost three ability. It will uh, target the party and her companions separately for these two effects. The party will receive plus 100% healing received for the next two battles. So this will kind of um, maximize your ba your ability to recover from damage the next couple battles. Um, and that factors in with this next part here. All companions will restore three points for three rounds, and that will be doubled with this healing receipt, so it's going to be six points for three rounds when it actually comes to being, but the buff will show this three-point line. Um, so this is a good way, if you run into a problem and you don't have a backup single target like massive healer, uh, she's only got small regen and party-wide stuff available. So if you run into a situation where you got a guy in death's door and then another guy gets hit with a crit and it's looking really dire, you might want to camp then and just use this. Um, it's going to help all your allies out massively and you can just focus whatever healing abilities you do have on the Magus if they are one of those mostly impacted by damage. So um, a couple other things to go over before we start going through her trinkets here. Um, on a crit, her crit effect is when she crits, she's going to give herself a buff for uh, less, or I'm sorry, less stress damage received for three rounds. Um, so that's nice. She's gonna, she has a built-in um, stress resistance buff when she crits. Um, as far as party compositions go, um, I would urge you to put her with two main DPS attackers, like people you want full-on just attack every turn kind of situations. If you put two of those in a party and her, that that four slot, you can kind of go a lot of different ways with. Um, and if one of those attackers has a heal, similar to uh, Crusader, for instance, or um, there's a few others, but they escape me right now, uh, then you can get away with them being the backup healer. Uh, otherwise, you can bring in another party member who can fill some roles and has a single target heal. Uh, that's how I would recommend. That's the only backup she really needs as a support unit is uh, massive quick healing on one target or maybe even multiple. But massive healing is not what she has. She has consistent healing. Um, and also when you're putting a party together, keep her mobility in mind. If you plan on using uh, transfix, plan accordingly, because she's going to keep moving forward every time she uses it, and then she will, if she ranks, reaches rank 1, she won't be able to use it anymore. 
Um, and also with him of the Ancients, if you plan on starting a combat like that, keep in mind she's going to dart backwards two spots in your order as soon as you use that. So when you put other people in the party in those other slots, keep in mind they need to be a little bit flexible to allow her to move into the desired rank. Uh, if I if I use this, I often do not include transfix as well because that just becomes too much to plan for after a certain amount of you know, uh, considerations. But if you have a party that can function from a lot of different ranks, yeah, you can probably use them in conjunction. Wouldn't be a big deal at that point. Um, she's also uniquely good for mark parties. Um, well, you'll notice none of her abilities did that, but the repost given by him of the ancients, when she hits with a repost, uh, she is going to mark that target. And her trinkets will also add additional on repost uh, effects to take place, whether it's bleed or blight or whatnot. Um, not all of them have one, but um, a lot of them do. We'll kind of go over those when we look at the trinkets here in a bit. Um, as far as quirks that I would recommend go, um, she's a little, a little bit weird in that aspect. I think the best trinkets to put on her are evasive or uh, damage reducing, like uh, giving her prot, that kind of thing. I recommend Luminous, and if you can get it, Corvid's Grace is really good on her, because that move resistance will also help, as well as the dodge. Um, Eagle Eye is actually pretty good on her, because all of her attacks are ranged. So, ranged attack crit bonus will actually come in really handy, especially if you really, really want her stress resistance to skyrocket. Um, Fairweather Fighter actually is oddly enough, uh, yeah, here it is, is oddly enough a really good quirk on her, because the way she heals, she tries to keep everyone at max HP all the time, and as long as she's doing her job right, she is rewarded with a bonus 20% damage, because her HP is also max at that point. Um, so uniquely, Fairweather Fighter is good on her. Um, otherwise, Hippocratic is a decent choice. Like, if I luck into it, I'm not gonna not lock it. But her actual brute number of damage healed is never actually that high. It will affect... It will affect things, all of her skills, yes. But it will not be the most bang for your buck. It's not gonna be as good on her as it is on a um, Vestal, for instance, but it's still going to help a lot. So mark that if you see it. Uh, actually, no, I do need to look at the trinkets. Uh, some of them are on the one we're going to be taking out into a dungeon. I'll go over those at the end. Uh, her very rare trinket here is the Blood Pact Charm. It gives you a bonus 10 accuracy, a plus 35% to stun resistance, and a bonus 30% damage versus Eldritch. Uh, so she's going to be pretty potent at fighting Eldritch. It's almost like um, her lower than backline damage at that point will be comparable to like a non-marked attack from a bounty hunter. At that point, she'll be doing decent damage to Eldritch foes if you if you bring this. Um, and on a repost hit, this is the kicker here, she is going to bleed that target with 140% pace for two points a round for three rounds. So this is a good way to get uh, bleed on repost and to give her some synergy with bleed groups. Uh, so this is actually kind of fun. This one I use a ton uh, because it's defensive and it has a repost hit. The Signet of the Pact. This is the rare trinket. It's going to give a plus three speed and a plus eight dodge at the cost of a 10% crit. Now her crit never reaches 10%. So what it's actually going to do at max uh, I have another thing boosting it, I believe, this one. Um, is give her like a maximum of minus four normally that is going to take away from her attack crit chance options. Uh, but on a repost hit, she will blight the target for that same 140% base, two points around for three rounds. So this will give her that blight synergy you want. If you want to run with a grave robber, you want that grave robber to do bonus damage, just target the ones she has reposted already. Her uncommon trinket here, the Enchanter's Ring, is going to 
give her a plus 15% move skill chance, a plus 20% debuff skill chance, at the cost of 20% less effective healing skills. And on repost, she is actually going to gather 5 torch. So every time she reposted somebody, the room's going to get a bit brighter with this enchanter's ring. Uh, that's a kind of fun situation. Uh, you'll notice both these uh, move skill and debuff skill bonuses apply to transfix. It is the move and debuff skill of choice for her. So this is just a way to em empower transfix. Her common trinket, the periapt of the living, is going to add 15% to her stun skill chance, and it's going to empower her healing skills by 30%. This is probably the most potent healing skill buff she has at her own disposal, and it's on the common trinket. Um, this is also going to uh, stress her out 15% more quickly. Now, she has also a uh, class-only runestone-style trinket, so when you use her camping skill and it lucks into a runestone, one of those might be this one, and it's only usable by her, the Divination Amulet. It's going to give her a 25% trap disarm chance, 15% scouting chance, plus 3% crit, all for the cost of 15% stress. Uh, so this is, I mean, I like to use these a lot. Uh, these are very, very handy for me. Uh, I, I personally like, I think scouting is probably one of the most important things in a dungeon, um, and even more important if you happen to be going in in the dark. Uh, you do not want to be surprised. You do not want those those mix-ups on round one, because you can end up with a lever in rank four and just be totally f***. Uh, the other trinkets we've got... Let's see. Um, I do not yet have a Sunward trinket for her, but that is the plan, is to have a Sunward as well. And her Comet trinket, Crystalline trinket, is Fracturing Talisman. This one is kind of weird, and I may slightly debuff the on post effect uh, percentage-wise. But what it does is going to give her a bonus 25% to her stress healing skills, a bonus 15% prot, at the cost of 10% of her max HP. Her reposts are going to do 30% less damage, and on a repost hit, she will stun the target. Currently it's set for 115% base. I may drag that down to 105 at most, just because um, I mean, if you're going into high-level dungeons, this 115% isn't going to trigger a lot. It's going to trigger about, I don't know, 40% of the time, something around there, 40 to 50% of the time, if you're not buffing the stun chance. Um, and when you factor in that's on repost, they're going to sit there with a stun on them for an entire turn until their next turn comes, and then they will miss that turn because they have just taken one. So they're going to sit there as a stunned target for a long time. So you can uh, get bonus Bounty Hunter um, synergy with that. You can get um, synergy with the Powder Keg with that, if you don't mind consuming that stun when you're done for that massive damage. Uh, so this is a interesting trinket when it lands. I'm just trying to find that exact balancing point still. But for now, it's 115% base. But that is all of her unique trinkets. Uh, keep in mind she can find eight different uh, regular trinkets down here. The only one I don't have is something called the Death Ward Rune. We're not going to go into these, but they're um, they're pretty potent for early game. Uh, they're they're about as powerful, ranging from like a uncommon trinket to a very rare trinket, based on what your class needs and what this trinket provides. So they could be a lot used in early game. Some of these have some niche use in late game as well, uh, but you can mix and match those to your own desires. But we are going to go into probably a uh, medium level dungeon would work, right? I've got too many level sixes, but I need a dungeon for the thorn to go in. So medium level it is. We're gonna go in here, why not? But what I'm going to do, actually... This this dungeon is going to be a little different, because I also want to show off Magnavis a little bit, which gets more powerful the later in the dungeon you are. Um, so what I'm going to do... Might need a few of those, too. 
is I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to do several battles, try and get the Magnavis buffs in her favor for a bit here, and then I will record three battles for you guys later on in the run so I can show off Magnavis as well. All right. Um, I've done a little less than half this dungeon, probably about equal to 50% of the dungeon, and um, I've buffed up Magnavis up to 240% damage and plus 20% crit. I generally like to do a little bit of crit and a little bit of damage, uh, but I have gone a little extra on the damage front this time. Normally a decent range to stop at would be like 150-ish percent damage and 20% crit. Somewhere around there is probably pretty potent. Around there you can start switching your moveset around and incorporating Magnavis into your game plan. Um, but the other thing I need to talk about here, I don't know if we'll luck into it on this box necessarily, but she is also, damn, she's also a looting unit. So when you take her out into a dungeon, make sure she's the one you're looting with, because she can get rare items and such. In Radiance, may we find victory. All right, first of our spotlighted battles. We're gonna start off with the normal Hymn of the Ancients. Normally, if you're this late in the dungeon, I don't even waste time with that. I just go straight into moving her into a position where she can use Magna Vis, and I go for that on round one, uh, just to clear them out as quick as possible. Uh, we're actually going to go for a stun this time. Normally, I'm all damage all the time with Thorn and Repost all the time, but uh, not today. Okay, activate Repost. Kill the stress. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay, we've already got some damage, stress damage up on our uh, Magus here. She just got done with like a really, really hefty horror right after I got rid of my uh, Laudanum, so it was kind of a problem. Well, I'm gonna mark you. That'll give the Thorn an easier time, I think. All right, Magnavis won't do much on one guy in the front ranks. It will hit him. It'll hit it. It'll his second square, but I'm not gonna use it on him this time. I'm gonna start stress healing where I need it. So between them, stress heal just under 20. It's not that bad. Uh, that's that's pretty potent for a two-person stress heal. Ooh, I can feral lunge. Goody goody goody. Did not crit. Crit would have killed him, guaranteed. Their cursed champion falls. All right, round one, not bad. We have shown off These stress heal move, can be felled. They and can we've be shown beaten. off the opening move. So let's um bring Magnavis first. We'll bring those and those and that, uh, and we are going to put them in order, but move you to the back rank. Unfortunately, that 9 stress is just going to happen. I have no way around it. Because camping would get rid of all of the shit I'm doing. <laughs> Alright, perfect party for it. Let's see if Magnavis can wreck these three in the back. Should do a decent chunk of damage. Annihilated. I'd say so. All but one flat out killed. And that guy is easy to deal with. I can just stun and kill him. And then you, sir, the only one left, so Paranoid Strike will only hit you. Erotic. With a crit again. Whew! This party is potent. Alright, Magus. Magnavis did some good work. As victories mount, so too will resistance. Well, so what are we gonna do now? Um, I've shown Magnavis, maybe I'll end with it anyway. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to stun folks in the next combat. Looting unit, we get to show off the rune stones. Darkness eh? Closes in. Eh? Haunting eh? The there we go. Men. You can collect these. These go up to a stack of 50, and add a stack of 50, they're worth 7,500 gold. So they're a decent um, loot gathering thing, but you'll notice this is a long dungeon. I've just now got almost 50. So in a medium dungeon, expect to get around 50, maybe 60. That kind of thing. Um, 
it's not quite as formidable of a wealth growing situation. I don't have bandages. Nice. Um, as the antiquarian is, but it, it is pretty potent in its own right. Um, it's just not quite as high as that level. As the light gains purchase, spirits are lifted. And purpose All right, third clear. battle. Let's just stun some folks. Yeah. So that way we can use seal evil on you. And I accept. I accept. No heal needed, so glimmering butterfly is not necessary. We are going to hit you with a bleed. Decimated. And the crit was enough. Damn. Your every turn different boost trinket is really good. Um Let's hit the normal standard regen. The wounds of war can be healed. Healing wind. But never hidden. Let's miss, evidently. Alright. Lunge. This is why I like to have her in rank 3, because Feral Lunge comes active the very first time you go into lost mode. Because it is a powerhouse of a move. And the quicker you use that in a battle, the better. Uh, we are going to... we don't really need to, but I'm going to get a free heal on you anyway, and then I'm going to activate the bleed. You'll die when your turn comes. Game over. Alright. Well, just to show her Magnavis one more time, uh, we're going to go into one more fight. Uh, we're just going to see if it's a good Magnavis one, and if so, we're just going to blast people. Uh, we haven't used haste yet, so I might activate that. Transfix maybe as well, though I think I might have used it. No, not on camera. I've used it in this dungeon for sure. This is the good party for it. I can Magnavis on round one and still have a target come round two. Oh my god. So much damage. This is why you bring one of those um, growing power units with you into dungeons. It just... it becomes really potent. Alright, I want to stun you. Yeah, that's what I thought. Eat Thorn! Okay, I'm gonna stress heal you, actually. I'd just rather not put a whole bunch of onslaught of damage on him right now. Uh, we are going to... we have not used haste, so we're gonna give Thorn haste. So you can activate your second stance and have a turn. And that turn is gonna be that plus bleed on repost. And then that should kill when his turn comes. You're gonna get the kill anyway. Quakes. Well, that should do it. I've even gone over to four, Be wary. four battles Triumphant on the combat section. But I highly recommend you check out the Magus. Um, and you know what? Do me a favor and thumbs up the mod when you're on the Steam page as well, because that's gonna help get to five star status sooner. Check out the Magus, and if you want, check out the Buried. It's my other class. Um, otherwise, thanks for watching. Stay frosty.